My name is Arlene Hall and my business is Island Organics, soap and candle manufacturing company. We create handmade organic skincare, bath and body care, organic candles and other body supplies. About five years ago, I experienced something with one of my daughters who had gotten psoriasis and I thought of all the things we can do to help her. So I wanted to use bush medicine on her skin and thought of a weight that I can incorporate it in something that she can use every day. And I discovered soap making and that's how Island Organics started. Because of that grant from Invest TCI, I was able to do a lot of the things I wanted to do to expand the soap business. The rewarding part is actually hearing the stories from the customers who've used our products. I would say, take the leap, get your business license, get all of your ducks in a row, and go and make the application because they make it as simple and as easy, and they actually help to get you through the process of obtaining the, the grant. So it's been a dream and it's been very easy. So I would say go ahead and provide all the information that's necessary and apply for the grant. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to this um, five part um, webinar series that is in collaboration with TC Invest and um, the TCI Backyard Farmers Group. I'm um, just to trying to sort of miss this mic right now. I wasn't sure if everybody was hearing me. Sorry, I wasn't any inconvenience. Uh, Right, so, so the, the first point on our list is conforming to regulations regarding area of interest. So is your business idea supported by legislation? So what I would say is that we need to check with the Department of Agriculture uh, to find out what is supported, right? Uh, talk to other farmers. Other farmers would have been in the, some of them would have been in the business and they understand uh, some of the different agriculture entities or business that, that are supported locally. Uh, are there fees attached? Different business initiative or enterprise attract different, attract different fees. So feasibility study. Uh, what, what is a feasibility study? Yes, we have to do a feasibility study in, in when we want to set up our agriculture uh, business enterprise. So what's the likelihood of your business succeeding or failing? Right, so and, and this now will take into consideration basically everything that we are going to discuss, right? And then you can come to a decision whether you're going to move ahead with that business or not, right? So this is basically a lot of research coming from marketing, uh, uh, understanding storage, 
right? Uh, uh, profit margins and so on. So the feasibility study is, is a must, right? Uh, access to land. Where do you plan on establishing the farm, the farm, whether it's a crop or livestock production, right? Or whether it is agro processing or whether it is a farm store, right? Selling agriculture supplies. Where do you plan on establishing this? Do you, do you own the land, right? If not, do, do you have permission or can you get permission? Uh, basically something in writing so that you can present to the agriculture department so we can get your 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 farm registered are you registered as a farmer is the land zone for agriculture and um this might be this might be new right this might be new to you as in you know what what does this mean um zone for agriculture so when it says zone for agriculture we mean that there are lands in Turks and Caicos that are basically zoned specific specifically to do agriculture alone. So you, you need to basically know where this zone, these loan zones land are, and you basically need to know if the land that you have is basically zoned to do agriculture. If you do not check that out, then you, when you go to set up your, your, your farm or your agriculture enterprise, you will basically, if it is not zoned for agriculture, you can basically run into issues. So um, this is basically, uh, a collaboration between the agriculture department and the lands department where we basically seek to find out if the land is zoned for agriculture when an applicant comes in to basically register, right? So, so you need to know that information before you move forward. Now, our right, capital, and capital is basically financial investment in, in different forms. So do you have liquid assets, um, you know, can, can convert to cash? Right? Do you have access to grants? Right? Do you have, have access to bank loans? Uh, do you have a partner who will invest in the business? So, uh, so this is essentially saying, how will you inject um, money into establishing your agriculture business? Right? So, you, so you need to know where the source is coming from. And um, grants, as it relates to grants, uh, Invest TCI can really say some more about that because I know that Invest TCI basically has grants basically available for, for farmers with, with farming initiative, farming business, right? Access to resource. So what do I mean? Are materials available locally to support business establishment and sustainability, right? Therefore. Does your local farm store have materials that you will need? So whatever you need to start your agriculture business with a crop production, livestock, farm store, uh, agro processing, does your local farm store have the material that, that can be used to basically establish the business? Will you have to import? Right, A lot of us might have to do that because uh, we might not find all the materials that we need on Highland. So you find that you'll have to factor in uh, importation of certain materials in order to move forward with your business. So you need to keep that in your mind as well, right? Uh, decide what to establish, right? So you, so, so you, so based on uh, previous researches or what we spoke about previously, you need to decide what you are going to uh, establish your business in. So is it going to be crops? Is it going to be livestock? Is it going to be agro processing or is it going to be agriculture? It, it, Right? When it comes down to crop production, we have a lot of different crops that are grown in Turks and Caicos Islands that we can basically grow. We can basically look at what, what the country is importing and, and, and kind of uh, see where we can, we can choose a few plants or, or a few crops from those and, and see if we can mass produce them in order to, to, to um, have sustainability in our business and for our business to strive. Livestock, right? And agro processing, it can be any, any product that you basically develop, secondary product from whatever raw material, whether raw material from livestock or raw material from plant products, right? And agriculture inputs is basically selling your fertilizers, uh, pesticides, um, feed, because of course, in order to, 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 to like run a sustainable agriculture uh, crop production or livestock, a farm or enterprise, you need to be able to 
to get your inputs locally. That would be much more convenient and cheaper for you to get them uh, to have to have access locally for those materials, right? For example, if you are planning to, to run a, a cattle farm, right, you need to be able to, to, to can get maybe hay or feed, or if you are doing a pig production or goat, you need to be able to, 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 to can buy feed locally, right? Because in order to, to bring in feed, in, import feed, it might be inconvenient for you, right? And it might not be very sustainable. Right, so you need to decide what you are going to do. And for all those of you have your backyard garden, um, it can be a backyard garden that you sell like um, primary uh, products or produce. So you basically uh, cut the lettuce or you cut the, you, you pick the sweet pepper or the tomato and you basically sell it as is. While with your backyard, you can also go into agro processing. So you can make your tomato sauce. You can you can package your, your whatever you grow in a more um, in a more appealing manner, right? And that will add the agro processing aspect to it. So you definitely can use your backyard garden to do agro processing as well as well as selling um, primary produce, right? Uh, marketing. Who will be your target market? Is it going to be the hotels, the restaurants? Uh, is it going to be a farmer's market concept or is it going to be supermarkets, right? You need to think about the price of goods or service because at the end of the day, you want to be competitive. And what I can say in Turks and Caicos Islands, I think we wouldn't have to worry about being too competitive because uh, we, we, we don't have a lot of commercial farmers presently and the, the demand is very high and the supply is very low. So there's, there's a space for, for, for many, many more farmers to, to, to engage commercially in whatever commercial agriculture production, whether crops, livestock, agro-processing, farming goods, they want to do, right? Supply of farm produce, whether wholesale or retail, you need to decide if, how you are going to, 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 to supply your produce, right? Obviously, if you are, if you are, if you are supplying a supermarket, it might be on a wholesale basis or hotels, Right, but on a farmer's market concept, you find that it will be more of a, a retail basis, right? Contract, contractual agreements. For example, you are securing a market with hotels and supermarkets and maybe even restaurants as well. You want to know if you are going to develop an, a, a, a contract, right? A written contract so that you know that, okay, then every month or every two weeks, this is what I'll be supplying. Right, and, and you arrange the price and so on. So that is basically contractual agreements and you need to have that in the back of your mind as well, right? All right, method of cultivation or rearing. So are you going to go organic? Are you going to go conventional indoors or outdoors? So organic is obviously using as, as less synthetic products as possible. Right, and conventional is basically using your synthetic chemicals, fertilizers, and so on. Is uh, basically how you see uh, agriculture being practiced uh, on, 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 on large scale commercial basis um, in, uh, in this time, right? Uh, indoors, as you can see on the screen, this is a, a greenhouse facility, right? This is a greenhouse facility, and it basically has one, two, three, four, five bays, can grow many crops. Um, can grow so decide if you are going to do that or you are going to go outdoors. Outdoors is basically what we are used to, just growing our crops outdoors, right? But I must add that growing a crop indoors in a greenhouse environment is very beneficial, it's very sustainable, especially when you are going to supply hotels, supermarkets, you want to be very consistent. When you are in a greenhouse situation as what you are seeing on the screen, you basically control many, many different variables. Right, you protect your plants from a lot of environmental conditions, uh, every rain, every wind, uh, high intensity sunlight, you get to control water, you get to control fertilizer, you control a lot of things. So production is more sustainable and you can guarantee that, okay, without the event of a disease um, causing issues, um, you can say, okay, you can project and say, okay, then I'm sure I'm going to be able to reach two, 200 pounds this week, um, you know, and schedule it. And this would be very satisfying to a hotel market or a, or a supermarket or 
uh, your customers that are looking for large quantities and, and quality, high quality, consistent quality. So this is something that we can definitely look into. And of course, with backyard gardeners, you can definitely have a small one in your backyard. And having us, and, and as I said, going indoors basically can increase your, 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 your production many folds compared to outdoors, as long as you are doing the correct things inside, right? So uh, storage and logistics, right? What do I mean by this? How will you store fertilizers, pesticides, tool and equipment and produce, right? How will you get your products to market? So you have to think about the distance of the farm to the road, the drivability of the road. Uh, will consumers come to the farm for produce? And do you need a truck or a van? So all of this obviously will, will, will determine storage and logistics and the, the drivability of the road can also, can also aid in, 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 in uh, what I would say, uh, marketable yield because you can definitely get damage uh, if the road is bad and you find that the vehicle is jerking up and you find that you, your produce might be getting bruised. So by the time you reach the market, the, the, the produce, you, you might have to kind of um, reduce what you originally wanted to, to sell, right? Um, we, we might need a truck, right, to carry our produce. Right, uh, and then when you look at the top fertilizers, pesticides, these definitely need storage area for themselves, right? You need proper storage area where you label your, 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 your different compartments for fertilizers, pesticides, you need an area for equipment, and you definitely need to store your produce because what if you are producing on a scale where uh, your market might not need everything? that you are producing. You are producing 2,000 pounds. Your, your market might say, okay, then I need 1,000 pounds this week, right? Because of some something happened and they need 1,000. You don't want to throw away the other 1,000. You want to be able to store it. So how are you going to store this? Obviously, um, another contingent plan is basically to have other backup markets where you could basically, in the case of emergency, you could basically um, sell those, 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 the balance to other markets. But um, another important thing that we need to consider is storage, cold storage, cold storage, right? So storing your produce in a refrigerated um, area to, 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 to slow down the deterioration and to have them for, for, for future um, sales, right? So in setting up a, a crop production then in initiative, uh, you need to think about storage, right? Obviously, if it's going to be too much of a high cost, you would not need to really install that now, but um, in the future, if you want to have produce right through, around the clock, right throughout the year, um, you can definitely think about cold storage, right? Because this is what supermarkets do as well. Um, it's not every time when customers come to buy, they, they, they bring in stuff. They bring in and they have their storage containers, they store them and then they bring them out as needs be, right? So we have to think about that. Um, other facilities that you might need, you might need a sorting and grading facility. You need bathroom, I need abattoir. So sorting and grading facility, obviously this, let us talk about if you are producing certain um, uh, plants, crops, right? You need an here where you sort uh, your, your, your crops, your, your produce, clean them up and grade them, right? Maybe you'll say, okay, this grade will go to this market, that grade will go to that market and, and so on, attracting maybe different prices. Uh, you need bathroom facilities. An abattoir now is an abattoir basically these with livestock, right? So if you are doing a livestock business, say for example, a piggery unit, a poultry unit, sheep, uh, uh, chickens, whether layers or broilers, you need an abattoir where you basically uh, slaughter. So you do your slaughtering there and, and basically that is where your, your, then your inspect, inspector would come in and inspect your meat and so on. But the abattoir deals entirely with um, slaughtering and, and, and um, ensuring that the, whatever you get from your livestock enterprise is up to par, up to standard, right? Uh, employees, will you need employees? So based on your, your organizational chart, you need a manager, do you need laborers, do you need drivers, right? Um, do you need somebody to manage the farm or manage the agriculture business? Right. Um, obviously, you are going to need laborers. So, will you can you source laborers locally, 
or will you have to import right will you need a driver to 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 to, to carry out your 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 to deliver your orders right so for example driving to the to deliver to the supermarket or to the hotel or will your customers be coming to pick up produce on the on, on your 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 establishment right so basically And then after all the research and consideration, um, that is everything that we discussed before. What is your next move? You will take everything, just explain and, and compose a business plan. So if you are going to run your backyard garden, if you are going to turn your backyard garden in a commercial enterprise, or if you are going to start a livestock commercial business or an agro processing business or a farm input business, you will need a business plan because you have to go through the, the, the cabinet and, and, and you will have to go to, to the land department and so on. And, and most definitely, if you are going to be seeking grant, like for example, Invest TCI has their grant. If you are going to seek a grant from Invest TCI, you have to present a business plan. So in order to, to, to compose a business plan, you will need to take everything that I just explained to you into consideration in order to know what you need to, to put in the business plan or what you need to do further research on to put in the business plan. So after you've done the business plan, you, have, you then submit your business plan to cabinet through business licensing authority for approval. And then now when it is approved, right? Because what happened is that you, you can't do it the harder way. You can't say, for example, go to invest TCI um, give them a business plan, um, seeking seeking funds, right? And your business is not approved. Your business plan is not approved by a cabinet, right? Um, it, it's basically a, a, like a, a chronological chain that you need to do this first and then this next and so on. So this is what you need to do. And after it is approved, then you go to, to um, invest TCI seeking funds, right? Um, so Basically, this is what I wanted to explain as it relates to, to starting an agriculture business, right? Obviously, a lot of us might have other business ideas within agriculture that we might want to start, right? Um, so these are basically just basic uh, broad groups of the businesses that can be, be started here that would, would make so much sense and be sustainable, if you ask me, right? Anything within crop production because we import almost all of our fruits and vegetables. Livestock is the same, right? When it comes on to pig, um, eggs, uh, broiler, that is meat, right? And so on. So the next, uh, and contacts, if you want to contact the Department of Agriculture, it's agriculture.gov.tc. If you want to contact the extension officer, which would be myself, Mario Smith, it's it's right here, mamsmith.gov.tc. So uh, basically, basically, these are all the points that I wanted to discuss with you that you basically need to consider in your mind before you compile a business plan, right? Uh, these will basically help you to, 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 to understand if your business will, will make any sense, if it will be sustainable, if it will be profitable. And, and actually guide you along the process straight to getting your, your business plan approved and, 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 and being ready to establish the farm. So when you're ready to establish the agriculture business, you will basically would have understood all the different criteria and, and, and know what, what is coming next. So uh, again, these are all the points, and if, and I, I'll basically hand over the floor now back to uh, the moderators. And if there are any questions, any comments, I'll basically take them now. Okay, thank you very much, Mario, for a very very informative um uh, presentation. Um, I don't, the one, only, I see one question here thus far, somebody asking if they can, um, oh, can you repeat your email address? Someone wants that. So can you pull up that, that part of the slide again, please? 
Okay, right. There we go. So it's Camelia. M A M S M A M S dot T C. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. right. And and we have to remember that uh, even though. We, 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 many of us might have our backyard initiatives, but we have to understand that it can be converted into commercial entities, right? And if you are going to convert it to a commercial entity, you, you will still have to go through all these processes. And, and, and most certainly, you will still have to, to if you are going to, to register, your, register it as a business, you will definitely have to get it approved by a cabinet. So, and to get it approved by a cabinet, cabinet, you will have to present a business plan, right? And most definitely, if you are going to be, be, be if you are going to try to access the grant from Investici, you'll definitely need a business plan as well. So, and then of course, if you are going to register your business with business license authority, right? It has to be approved, right? As in the agriculture business, it has to be, approve and of course there are different categories as i said right hydroponics um uh you various livestock entities pigs goats sheep rabbit um layers right when it comes down to crop production when you go in the supermarket just look on what is in, inside here look on what you consume right a lot of leafy greens a lot of sweet pepper tomato broccoli cauliflower all of these things. If you ask me, basically anything you produce will sell here because we import everything, right? So it's just you have to select a few crops or select a few uh, livestock um, animals that you want to, to basically um, expand on or basically mass produce and, and you will have your market, you know, because um, anyone will tell you that, look, in order to import produce, First of all, you have the import time from, from the country it is coming from, right? So you'll basically cut that out because you're getting the produce locally with the livestock or, or crops or whatever agriculture inputs, right? And, and whatever uh, chemicals or anything that, that, that might, be, might have to be added to certain products, uh, you'll basically kind of cut that out because as I said, the, the produces our products are already here and it's basically just going to the market, just going to the market. There are no two weeks or one week waiting time, right? So it poses a lot of advantage, right? So that is why um, many buyers will, will, will love to support local initiatives, right? As long as it is sustainable and they can get products on whatever uh, time scale that, that you agree on, right? Because I think one of the things that affects us in the Caribbean as, as farmers and as, 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 as setting up, uh, having our farm business is that we may be able to, 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 produce, to produce, say, for example, a thousand pounds of meat this week, our crops, our, 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 our tomatoes this week, and then next week we might not be able to do it, right? because of maybe poor management or because of environmental factors coming in and, and, and causing this variation, right? So once your initiative is sustainable, right? And it is managed properly, I feel like, well, I, well, I can basically say that I, I know it will do well locally, right? And, you know, the agriculture department supports local, local production. Um, you know, we are trying to move towards food security, where we can basically say, look, we can mass produce this. We are good at producing this. We have, uh, uh, we have many small business coming into large business now producing these kind of produce, crops or livestock, and you know, we can produce this amount. So you'll only be, you, can, you can import this amount and we can basically work together. So uh, yeah, any more questions? Yeah, Mr. Smith, we, we got a question here from one of the um, uh, the, the um, attendees. It's, can you explain where are the agricultural zones in TCI? All right, so uh, I, as it relates to that, uh, we normally refer um, 
to the land department. So okay. they are the one who basically tells us um, where and if the person is on a piece of land that is not zoned, they basically will reply to us and tell us, well, it is not zoned. But as it relates to physical location, um, I, cannot, I cannot cite the exact um, wording, but I know it, it is a, a mass of land, land in the Snake Hill area. That is what I what I what the information that I've gathered. It's in the Snake Hill area. Uh, I can definitely I can definitely do some more investigation. Or if the person is interested um, to basically see these lands, right? Um, mm -hmm. I can be of, of, of help where we could basically go and take a look. But um, it is basically in the Snake Hill, Snake Hill area, um, going into, into Blue Hills, that side, right? Okay, so, so generally they would need to go and see the, the lands department, the um, land survey. And uh, also, um, couldn't play help them in terms of zoning areas, what they can and cannot do in certain areas, because they may already have something there that can be permitted for that? Uh, can you repeat that, please, Miss? Um, yes, uh, yes. Uh, um, other than referring them to land survey, wouldn't they be able to also see planning? Which would be able to tell them more in terms of zoning whether or not they can, they may or may not be permitted to do what they want to do at the current location that they're at. Oh right, yes, yes, because that is actually the process. Because mm -hmm. when when a person comes in to register with the agriculture department, when we investigate and do our very or or, or or field visit to do our verification, we basically send. They, 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 we ask for land documents. So we'll send those, we'll send those land documents, we'll send those land documents to uh, land department and they will basically tell us based on where that person is located if they can do the business that they want to do there, right? And if not, they will tell us, they will reply to the Department of Agriculture, look, um, it is not permitted, and the person would have to, to go to the, the zone area, right? So in all cases, what, what agriculture is moving towards is having persons practicing agriculture in the zone area, right? In the zone area. And as we know, the landmass and providential, is, it, it, is, it is not very large, and we have a lot of housing developments, a lot of residential areas, and certain farming initiatives um, especially some in, in livestock production and even in crop production because with crop production we are talking about expansion as well, maybe using pesticide, all these kind of things. So, so uh, many, of our, many of the lands are basically in areas that are um, close residential areas. So um, that is why we have zone area now that is basically um, a distance from actual residential areas and communities, right, that you can set up livestock um, enterprises, right? So, um, so that is why we, we have to first see, see that we, we, we should, if we have a piece of land, we should not just go ahead and say, okay, then I'm going to set up this type of farm, right? It's be best to see uh, the, the advice from lands department, right? And, and, and they will say exactly if they can permit this kind of development, Right or mm -hmm. not? Yes. So the final call is with them, um, and then secondly, we will basically go by what they say. Um, we have another question here that was posed by Ms. Sonia Grant. It was actually in 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 line uh, in the chat. Um, it's actually one that I I'm very familiar with, but she's asking um, where can she find the um, the information, the statistics on tonnage of imports based on produce. And um, Ms. Grant, I can actually answer that. There's a yearly report on imports, exports that's produced by the um, Department of Statistics and they can be found um, on their, their website on um, the Department of, um, Turks and Caicos Department of Statistics website. You will be able to find that information there. Just check out um, Mr. Sherlin Forbes and his staff and they will be able to accompany you, okay? But she really wanted to know the stats in terms of the the um, the tonnage. There was also a comment here, um, Mr. Smith. Um, it says 
This sounds like a lot of barriers to get into farming. Sounds like a lot of stuff that we have to have to, you know, um, well, like, I guess because it's a new kind of a, well, not really a new frontier for us, but it's, it's you know, kind of new for our generation. You know, is there um, any words of encouragement that you can kind of sway this person's thinking from thinking that it's so, you know, it's going to be a difficult process? Of course. First of all, let me start off by saying we have, we have quite a number of registered farmers who basically went through the entire process did business plans, got their business plans approved, right? So approval and they are, they are, they are basically very different um, initiatives, right? So getting your business plan approved and your business idea approved is basically a, 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 positive, a positive thing, right? Um, and then, you know, companies like Invest TCI, uh, they, they, they are basically willing to, to support farmers, but as we know, anywhere you go, anywhere you go, if you are going to set up a business, there are certain protocols that you have to observe. And mm -hmm. of course, these in the Turks and Caicos, they, 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 I don't believe that they are, I don't think that they are basically there to, uh, what I would say, impede or, or stop anyone from, or discourage anyone from, from going to farming. It, like us at the Department of Agriculture, if you are going to register with us as a farmer, there are certain documents that you need to present. And once you present those documents, it's, it's easy sailing, right? However, when it's going to go to, to, to a business level now, you definitely you need to do a business plan, right? Because that will also help you, the business owner, to understand where you are, where you, you want to be in maybe in three years, four years. Right, or you want to scale up your, your 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 business, right? And at the end of the day, you want to ensure that you are you are legally protected, and you are also backed by the government of, of Turks and Caicos Islands, right? So being registered and 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 going through the right channels, you will also get certain subsidies from the agriculture department. There are a lot of benefits, right? Um, yeah, and and I mean. When you look at, at invest, even invest TCI, I am constantly mentioning invest TCI because um, I personally know from the moment I've been here, I come to the Turks and Caicos Islands and um, I've been uh, talking with them. I know that they have a very deep interest in agriculture production on the Turks and Caicos Islands and different businesses, right? So basically, if you are going to as I said before, if you're going to get their grant, they want to see that you have a sound, uh, what I would say, uh, business idea and your mm -hmm. projection, right? And we want to actually engage in ideas that we know will, will um, um, be beneficial to the island and be sustainable, right? And not only just produce this, 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 this niceness at the beginning and then cannot follow through, right? So um persons and then of course you have to go to go through the lands i think a lot of people a lot, a lot of persons might talk about the land part of it you know getting land and for agriculture and so on right um of course it is it is looking bright now why because you have zone areas now you have zone areas for agriculture now that that people can actually um access go to the right channels to access right to, to to start your agriculture business so um i think that as we move along things are becoming more um more easier right and we don't want to to have you know farmers all over the place and not um not able to account for what they are doing and not able to legally back them right you know for example when you're looking at a lot of countries you might have a lot of farmers you know, maybe squatting on land, and then when there's an important when there's an important project in the department um, or within the ministry, that farmer cannot get access to subsidies or any benefits or anything like that, and that farmer might might feel, you know, bad because they are saying they have been farming, but they cannot get access to this. But in order to get access to certain benefits, you have to be registered, 
right? And, and, and these are the things that we want to push, right? We want to ensure that you are covered, you are protected, and we can basically account for you and have you in our program. So that is why we, we, we want you to just go through the different channels um, and, 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 and get the, the relevant paperwork done. I, I think it is very straightforward. I don't think it is very, um, it, to me, it is, not, it is not a hassle at all. It, it just takes a little time and we just need to just put the, the different um, pieces together, right? And, and, mm -hmm. and then forward. Also to uh, Mr. Smith, just to, to uh, alleviate the, the, the stresses of those who are wondering, you know, um, where they're seeing, you know, all of the, the various barriers that they have to go through or whatever in order to get to that point. Um, T, um, invest TCI, their CED segment, they do assist in terms of helping you develop your business plan. So you get that assistance from the government uh, on, on all, in all areas. So if you're unsure what you're doing, you do have that guidance there. And for those persons who are interested in um, you know, following through with, with this, we on our next session, which is gonna be on the 2nd of, um, of November, um, we're gonna have a local farmer. We're going to have an actual local farmer by the name of Miss Casey Hicks. She is from Caicos Traditions. That's they grow their own corn and make their own grits. <laughs> so um, she's going to be here um, with us. So she'll be able to, you know, alleviate those fears that you might have. You know, you might not want to do grits. You might want to do something else. I mean, we we grow excellent papayas. We're great on sweet um, sweet potatoes. They they grow like wildfire here. Maybe somebody will figure out how to capture the, um, the Turks head cactus and, and, and have that, like how we have frozen okra. <laughs> Maybe we can have that. So, I mean, the opportunities are there. So, um, you know, it's just a matter of availing yourselves and webinars like this, sessions like this will give you that opportunity to liaise with the persons who will be able to set you up right in the in these areas. You know, and it's, it's beautiful seeing how many persons have attended, you know, um, you know, it, it, it gives you a good feeling to know that we're getting somewhere here and it's not going to be afraid of. Um, They've also asked a question, Mario, in terms of when the official farmer's market will come on stream. Do you know of any information in regards to that? Um, all right. So with that, I, I'm not sure of the date. I'm not sure. I'm not, I cannot say even um, as it relates to relative to COVID and so on. I'm not sure about um, that aspect of it, the farmer's market. Um, I think we, we, should be have, we should be having the, 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 the director on, on a session, right? I think, um, I think so. I think that's going to be in on the 16th. Right, right. So I think she would. She I would, think I'm not. Yeah, she would better able to discuss in depth on on that aspect, right? But I just want to just um mm -hmm. reiterate something that you said about CD. I mean, how how could I leave them out of of um of even saying somewhere about CD? Uh, CD is there. So when you hear me talking about um, using everything that I've said to you, all the different things that you need to think about and putting that into a business plan idea, uh, CD is there. CD is, the, is the, the organizer that will help you with the technical part of composing your business plan and, and, and setting it right for you to present to, to, to cabinet. So what I'm trying to say here is that in all the different aspects of you setting up your agriculture business, you will have professional guidance. So when you are looking from the livestock and the crop production hen, uh, in terms of how you would formulate your business plan, the agriculture department is there, right? Uh, in terms of composing it now, CD is there. So, so basically, agriculture department and CD work together, right? Because, of course, if someone goes to CD, they will sometimes send them to, to the agriculture department to really, or us to really listen to um, the agriculture uh, enterprise that you want to go into to see, if, to see how, how, how it will work, like just a normal 
right there and then brainstorming to see if it will work, right? So, uh, CD, we, we have done, and the Department of Agriculture, we have done um, collaborations with CD in terms of presenting training sessions as well. So, what I'm saying is right along the way, you will, you will be constantly having training sessions, training sessions, whether in a classroom setting or in a field setting, right? So, I, based on what I've seen so far, nowhere along the process will you be left alone to figure out things, right? Uh, Agriculture Department, um, CED, Invest DCI, along with other, along with other companies that you might seek information. We'll do, we will be working together to help you to be to, to, to establish your business. Right? More questions? Um, I don't see any more here. Come on, people. You want to start an agriculture business? We are talking about agriculture. We are, we are, we are talking about we as a, an, a country, we are importing majority of our fruits and vegetables we are importing our meats um you know it is it, we need we have we have we have local backing and as i said uh, cd invest dci msme program and then another thing that i've i've heard too is that uh you know to maybe access the grant it 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 it, it, it is maybe tedious but i think the whole tedious process of everything here in terms of starting an agriculture business is the business plan. That is what I think. A lot of people might be just shying away from writing the business plan. But what I'm saying is that it's not like you will be left alone to sit down and figure out how will you write this business plan. As I said, CD is there, right? And, and they'll basically guide you every step of the way. Because I've been to training sessions with CD that they basically show people out to write the business plan, right? The, the CD actually has a template that you follow, right? And you might be saying, well, how will I, how will I get the information to put it? So for example, you are doing a, a, a livestock initiative. You are going to um, produce eggs or broilers. Come to the Department of Agriculture, we have, um, we have um, doctors in the department, right? very versed on, on livestock production, livestock development. We have the information at the department. So all you have to do is just schedule your meeting, come into the department and sit and talk with one of us, right? And then now we'll be able to say, okay, then you need to look at this, look at that, right? And, and um, so we understand, we understand that we are here to share information and we understand that Turks and Caicos Islands is developing and, and, and you will need the information from us. We are the technical people out here. You need the information from us. We are not expecting you to, to know everything off the bat to compose a business plan. I can compose a business plan off the bat because I might have all the information I need or I know how to go about it, right? But you need help. We are going to give you the technical advice, give you the guidance work with you with other departments and and right so you don't need to shy away from it you just need to face it and and seek help right and that is what we are here to do to 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 to, to, to give help technical assistance to farmers who are producing and also the um agro processors who want to produce something from what the, the primary produce from the farmers are the person who wants to, 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 to supply the fertilizer and the, 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 the pesticide for the farm always producing, right? Right? So um, I think that there are many, 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 many ideas. And you know why there are many ideas? It's because we do not have many agriculture, commercial agriculture establishments or initiatives here with a crop production or livestock here. So it's like everybody is like it is so easy to get into a niche market. Why? Look at this. Tourism is like the number one, uh, what I would say, industry, right? That is our thing here, tourism, right? We have a lot of hotels, a lot of resorts. That is iron market. That is high end market. So why not tap into the iron market? Um, 
we, we, we have supermarkets, we have a lot of restaurants and so on. You know, get into niche markets. If you don't want to get into a niche market, um, provide something that you know is consumed on a general basis here, a large, la largely like um, if you are going to do crop production, say for example, any leafy greens or the sweet pepper, you know, as much as all those are basically in your face, we are importing them. So you can, right? What I, to me, whatever you produce will have a space here. The problem is being able to produce, produce it on a sustainable basis, being able to create that environment to, 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 to produce what you want to produce with a livestock or, or, or certain um, crop production, right? So, and we are, we are small here. We are, very, we are basically tight knit. So whatever you do, marketing is not going to be hard, if you ask me, right? Marketing is not going to be hard because we are so close knit that, you know, anything you do, it, is, it, it can basically be advertised very quickly, right? And we support each other here. So just, I'm here, the department is here. I'm very energized. I'm very happy for this session because I realized that uh, there are a lot of, and, and why not? There are a lot of persons who want to start agriculture and um, businesses, um, but they might not know why. So we are here. Any more questions? Okay. Um, I got two questions really. Um, oh. One is, and, and, and I think this will probably be more light manufacturer, but you can answer this. It says, if you are making a product from a plant, is it still considered agriculture? Example, a phase product from papaya. Would that be considered agriculture? Well, it's kind of linked there, but that the production itself, would that be considered a part of the agriculture? Um, would that be considered agriculture? Yeah, because, because um, of course, if it's, if it's space, um, I don't know if there's a cosmetics category, right? But 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 um, that if it if it uh, if it is only going to be for a face, it is it definitely will be. Mm -hmm. cosmetic. But if it's going to be something that for consumption as well, it can be agro processing, right? It can fall under agro processing, and agro processing is basically um, getting secondary products from from primary products. So if you plant the papaya tree, right? You plant the papaya tree and use the papaya leaf to make a, 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 a tea bag or something that is agro processing. If you use the papaya to make a juice or something, that is agro processing. But as it relates to skincare and so on, that might be cosmetics. Because if you look at it, many of the products that we use today are coming um, something directly and indirectly from plant products, right? Mm -hmm. And they, they put, those under cosmetics, right? So um, uh, I think if you have a business that, that does both, right? If you have a business that does both, I think they wouldn't register you under maybe the same, under two different categories. Um, I mean, I think maybe mm -hmm. what you do, the majority of my take president. So if you do majority of maybe consumption, Agro-processing for consumption, maybe they'll you'll be under agro-processing, or if it's if it's cosmetics, maybe you'll be on a cosmetics. Um, that information will definitely we will definitely have to find out more from from business from business life mm -hmm. authority, right? But um, yeah, certain aspect of it would be considered agro-processing. Okay. Um... I think that would be really keen on, on seeing um, the, in our series, um, creating partnerships for supply. So I think they, they would be keen on, on, on you know, being uh, on that session. Um, there, we're gonna be winding up um, at eight, okay? Um, so we've got another 12 minutes, I think it is. Right. Um, there's, a, there's a question here, this gentleman has been, this is a, a pretty good question here. He wants to know, if there is going to be, um, I don't want to misread it. It says agricultural science assistance program. Um, would there be any assistance on dealing with the challenges of farming here? Um, and he says, I think understanding the science of farming here would be helpful. Having a forum to discuss some of the challenges and share best practices would go would um, go a long way. 
Okay, um, okay. Okay, so that is a very good um question and a very good concept. And uh I can say straight off about that what we are doing now is basic can basically fit into what you are saying. Um as a as a department, department of agriculture, um a part of our our, our our mandate is to basically provide technical advice, especially for me as an extension officer. I do field visits, I do trainings without a uh, demonstration, field visit in the classroom. So in the classroom, well, not a classroom, but in a, in a room setting where you come and gather and we, and we have a session. And in those sessions, people can ask questions, they can pose different cases and we can talk them through. If you have a specific uh, case, with your farm, you can basically talk about it and we can we can we can talk through it, right? Um as it relates to having like a like a forum, like a forum, a special forum, maybe gathering at like what you'd have these tonal meetings then. Like what you'd have these tonal meetings. Um the closest thing we've done to that is basically when we do training sessions and we have people coming in and they ask questions. But I think that is a good concept where uh, we can have people, you know, gathering, you know, like on certain specific times and you can talk about challenges instead of coming with a pre-prepared training session type of thing. It's basically a random, uh, random discussion forum where mm -hmm. persons come and talk about different aspects of agriculture, mm -hmm. what, what, are, what they are facing, personally in agriculture and what they would like to see. And uh, so I think that is something that we can look into. I think that would be very beneficial, of course, after um, the COVID as, as, as um, you know, the control over that. So um, I understand what you're saying, uh, participant, and it is, it is definitely something that we are going to do because I understand personally that um, we might, be giving advice and, and so on, and you might be subjected to a certain um, agenda in a certain session, and you find that what you really want to know or find out does not fit into the program, so um, you have to revise that in a different space. So the forum now will basically allow you to ask whatever agriculture related questions and people can get more personal with what they want to know about agriculture production. So um, I definitely like the concept, you know, I definitely like, and we have been, as department, we have been doing a lot of outdoor initiatives and, um, you know, just because of the COVID, we have been able to, to be out there. But this is definitely something that we are going to look into and um, you will definitely hear more about it because I think it is a great initiative to interact with, with different stakeholders, whether farmers, business owners, uh, uh, inputs, um, agro-processors, everybody come together and share ideas. So um, thank you for that concept. I think it's really great. Yeah, see, he also follow up to that, just a suggestion, but he was saying, you know, um, a blog, um, the farming ideas once a month, you know, you can have a, a demonstration, you know, just of ideas of what we, you know, good practices, um, just a suggestion towards it. Um, and we're winding down, um, just a final question here is, um, given the opportunities, why do you think not, why have not more persons invested in this sector? Considering right, so the many opportunities, I mean, it's a new frontier pretty much for us. Right. Um, I think, uh, if uh, based on my opinion and and what we have what what we have seen as a department over the years, is that uh, we we need to people need to be more aware of what agriculture can do, what agriculture means, right? And to get more personal in basically how people think, um, and it's not only in Turks and Caicos Island. Uh, in, 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 in previous generations, you know, younger generations now might have the concept that, you know, agriculture is maybe a dirty work or you, the agri farmers are poor and, 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 you know, those kind of things. But agriculture is basically um, an industry 
that drives first world countries, right? Agriculture is an industry that drives first world countries. If you look in America, if you look in, the, the, in, in Europe, you, you, you will see the many, many acres of, of crop production and livestock that is happening. And that is why they can maybe import minimally and they can feed their people. So I believe that uh, in, in, in improving agriculture production in the Turks and Caicos Island, people need to be more aware of the different avenues, the different, the different agriculture initiatives, what they can do. And you know what else they need to know? They need to know how much money they can make because that is what we are in it for. Also, apart from producing local production, people need to know that they are going to make money. Right? They need to know that. So when you can say, okay, then, um, and that is why the business plan is important because you can see the projections, you can see the money that you can make. So I think that, uh, and then us in the department, we are, that is what we are, we are, we are, we are, we are doing. We are, we are getting people aware. We are showing people figures, right? We are showing people how, how, how things or different agriculture initi initiatives can be done, right? Uh, in an effort to, to, to improve local food security. So, um, and then of course, we are trying to make things more, more, more accessible as a department. We are trying to subsidize um, farmers, right? So make things, initiatives more attract, attractable, right? So when a young farmer comes in and they say, okay, then I want to go into farming, right? Uh, well, we say, okay, then. You can, you know, these are what we have to offer. This is what you need to offer. And we can basically help each other. So that person will basically feel motivated, right? So um, we are definitely, we are definitely creating different, different um, incentives and uh, that farmers can have access to, to basically help to, to push their initiative forward. So what I would say is just basically, um, getting the word out there and showing people how important food production is. And I'm sure with recent storms and everything and the pandemic and all of that, people understand how local food production is important, right? Because if we depend on import, it can basically have a negative impact on us. And that alone must show that we need to be producing, uh, mass producing locally. And of course, well, maybe you, you do not see this information out there in public, but many of the richer persons in the world, they are farmers, right? Farming, farming is not what you knew 30 years, 40 years, 50 years ago. Farming is more technological now. So that, that will basically have to spark the minds of the younger generation because everything is technology, right? You can sit down in a tractor and a combine and you can press a couple buttons you plow the land, you plant the seed, everything. You don't have to go out there manually doing anything. You have harvesters. These are the things that are out there now. It's just for us to integrate them into our own production system, and then it can be more attractive, right? No more will people look and say, oh, some a man throwing over a, a, a bag or a fork on his shoulder and a cutlass going to the farm, coming back dirty. When you look into it, for example, uh, for example, greenhouse production, you can put on your tie, your white shirt, go into your greenhouse, um, open my box, press two buttons, the plants start getting water, the plants are getting fertilizer, everything is controlled automatically, right? So, you know, long gone, long, 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 long gone the days when agriculture is very, 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 is, is 100% labor intensive, right? It is now more like, Punch in a few numbers and you make millions. That is how simple it is and that is how attractive it is now, right? And you can basically raise your family and diff generations and upon generations with agriculture, right? Especially in the Turks and Caicos Islands, the demand is there and you can basically get good price once you set up a, a, a sustainable management system, right? To, 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 to manage your line of establishment. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Mario. Um, we've come to the end of this session.
Um, Mr. Smith, I would like to thank you so much for a very informative presentation. Um, and on behalf of um, TC, in, uh, I'm sorry, Invest TCI, I'm sorry, I'm an old, uh, a, a former employer, employee at TC Invest. So yeah, that's stuck in my okay. mind, but Invest okay. TCI. Yeah. And um, in collaboration with um, the Backyard Farmers, um, thank you for being our first facilitator for our first session. Um, tonight's session was understanding farming basics is starting a farm business. The overall series is entitled Backyard Farmers Farming for Profit, Taking Your Backyard Farm to the Next Level. Ladies and gentlemen, we have four more of these sessions. Um, they will be posted, the times and the dates will be posted in the group. They're, they are there now, but they will be um, pinned at the top. And but the next session will be on the 2nd of November. Um, and that is going to be ideas for turning your backyard farming into a profitable business. Okay, um, we look forward to, to hearing from you and seeing you guys in future. Keep your questions coming. Um, Mr. Smith has made himself available as well as our friends over at Invest. People make use of the opportunity. Let us not see farming as the dredgers, um, dredgers work as it used to be. Let us see it as a means and a way of sustaining ourselves and moving forward. I think the best way that once you're able to feed yourself, I think you've made that 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 really pivotal step in propelling yourself forward. Um, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you. And we will see you guys next week on the second. God bless. Have a great one. Thank you.